Hello, my name is Bill Cedarberg, and I'm currently chairing a group called the WNC Broadband Project, which is organized through University of North Carolina, Asheville. And our purpose is to advocate for better broadband here in Western North Carolina. And uh, it's been an exciting three-year project for a number of us. I happen to be a retired college president, and I and my colleagues have no uh, nothing to gain particularly about it being involved in this issue other than a good sense of improving uh, things for our citizens here in western north carolina so one of the issues that has emerged recently uh, has been the fcc had asked for the public input on mapping issues now that seems rather esoteric for the average citizen and certainly was esoteric for me as i got started in uh, looking at broadband here in western uh, north carolina and that is surely we know where there are broadband services and where there aren't good broadband uh, availability and lo and behold it's just not true that nobody has been responsible for making maps about where there is good and where there's bad service uh, nobody knows exactly where the fiber cables are laid throughout the region uh, nobody has an understanding of where there is fiber as opposed to a coaxial cable uh, running to the homes and so the fcc is now involved in a more uh, sophisticated approach of looking at how do we map uh, the uh, the areas and they're finally getting around to doing that and we're very fortunate here with the WNC broadband project and that we have two former FCC officials uh, that are assisting us one is a gentleman by the name of Stag Newman who is the chief technologist for the FCC and one of the co-authors of the uh, national broadband plan and the other is Greg Vogt who is a retired uh, attorney and worked for the FCC and has done consulting and advising for broadband companies uh, throughout the country. And these two gentlemen really know uh, the material. So what I'm reporting is kind of a summary of what I've learned and uh, I hope it's helpful to you. So what we've done is put together a presentation for the FCC. And I think the easiest way for me to do is to put it into a PowerPoint presentation that I can share the slide and talk from. So um, if you'll forgive, we're gonna switch now and I'll pull that up on the screen uh, and uh, I can uh, share with you what we're telling the FCC about the mapping issue and a little bit more about broadband here in Western North Carolina. So this is a nice graphic uh, showing the mountains here in Western North Carolina. And that sort of sets the stage of how broadband is a challenge because it's so much more expensive to lay fiber optic cable throughout our mountains. Uh, and it also creates more little pockets of areas that uh, are very difficult uh, to serve. So to help with broadband, we created the WNC Broadband Project. And it's really in partnership with UNC Asheville. And we enjoy using uh, students who are paid uh, to work with us and learn something about broadband and help uh, organize the website and generally uh, assist us in our project. Uh, we are nonpartisan. Uh, we're also non-ideological. Uh, in the sense, our focus is on broadband and not on big government or small government or this, that, or the next thing. Uh, and we also want to be a voice for the citizens in the area because it's difficult there aren't any built-in advocates for broadband, really, and we want to be just that, a broadband uh, advocate. And so we assist the uh, counties and communities in their uh, efforts, uh, and we try and have good conversations with our legislators and with uh, Congress people uh, about the importance of broadband. Uh, and we've developed some interesting tools over the time to help communities and counties with their uh, efforts at looking at broadband, uh, including empowering neighborhoods uh, like where I live. We live in an area called Biltmore Lake, and um, it's kind of a, a upper scale neighborhood. But even here, the broadband is rather spotty. So we created a survey and uh, some uh, tools to use for mapping where broadband is and, and where it isn't. Uh, and we also are very proud of advocating. Uh, and as I mentioned, we've had a caucus with area legislators that we organize. We're busy doing that right now uh, as the legislative session is in uh, process. And we're also meeting with the congressional staff to talk about broadband uh, issues. When we talk about broadband and the FCC efforts, the word that is really current is the future proof uh, broadband. And when we say future proof, um, it's often undefined, 
but generally I think of it in terms of trying to build a robust system that is fast enough uh, and has appropriately uh, slow latency uh, rates that we can um, uh, rely on a system that can adapt to the future speed needs uh, and capacity needs on broadband. And as you know, you have teenagers, just gaming itself is ever increasingly demanding of, uh, of um, broadband capability. And these are a bunch of details. And I mentioned that I'm not an expert. These all means a lot uh, for uh, citizens. I would zero, or experts, I would say, I would zero in on the two top buttons. That is, for residential use, for the average citizen, we're looking at at least 100 megabits in speed down uh, from the internet to the computer, and then 10 megabits uh, up as you provide data uh, going up. And that is different than the current FCC policy, which is 25 and three. And so when we talk about future proofing, we're really talking about quadrupling, if you will, the current speeds recommended by the FCC. One of the big conclusions that we reached in our efforts with UNC Asheville and a group called NEMAC, which is a, a nationally modeling uh, center at, at UNC Asheville, which are experts in, in mapping, is that we really have found that the broadband infrastructure is not just a rural issue, uh, it's also a very much an urban issue. Uh, when I served in the legislature way back when in Michigan, uh, I was the first person to create a legislative bulletin board on uh, modem and dial up or the, the telephone lines that uh, blazing 1200 uh, megabits or whatever and access information about the legislature. Well, I discovered that almost everybody there that was accessing it were farmers because the uh, cooperative extension programs in Michigan were training farmers how to use uh, the internet. And that, excuse me, that tradition has continued over the years and that the federal government is really focused on the rural agricultural areas and making sure that they get broadband, but has not concentrated on the urban areas. And what we have found is that infrastructure issues are every bit as important in an urban area as in a rural area. So this is a map that was put together by Stag Newman and the NEMAC team at UNC Asheville. And it shows where there are pockets lacking broadband service here in Buncombe County. And you can see from the uh, white spots, there are many, many areas that do not have uh, broadband services. And when we calculate the percentage of population into that, we estimate that from 10 to 15% of the population in what is defined as an urban community uh, does not have adequate broadband. And right in the middle, you'll see the Biltmore Estate. Uh, and what struck me as but somebody from Michigan was how dominant that was here in Mac, uh, Buncombe County and what a significant asset that is uh, to the community. But this map uh, gives uh, the FCC and others a flavor as to what real mapping means and uh, how significant it is to the urban uh, area. Uh, and so we find that the federal programs really need to focus not just on those rural areas, but also in the urban areas and fill in the gaps and, and uh, help serve those pockets. And that's gonna require a significant policy change uh, at the federal level. Uh, we've also, uh, these as we look at it, discover that Western North Carolina has really been shortchanged uh, in the services that we receive from the federal government. And so we're asking the FCC uh, to really look into this issue in depth and to come up with new metrics uh, that can be used in federal funds to help fill in the gaps. Uh, and thus, we're sharing this information with the FCC. We've offered our experience and, and uh, expertise in that. And there's quite some interest. In fact, the other day, a national uh, firm that is very present in wireless systems contacted us. They were really intrigued with uh, the map and what we were doing here in Buckham County. And it goes to show that I think we can do some things locally uh, that will be very, very beneficial. And so our big push is that we've asking the FCC to come up with new maps maps that are fairer to Western North Carolina, uh, maps that are more sophisticated. Uh, just as an aside, the FCC current maps will define if there's one person or firm in a uh, census block that has 
broadband, then the whole census block has broadband. In a mountainous rural areas, those can be very big geographic areas. And just because one business might have it along the highway doesn't mean that a person or residence is going to have it 100 yards off of the highway. Uh, so those are a little bit of the issues we've been working on, and I hope this has been of some interest to you. We have found with WNC Broadband Project that um, it's a critical need, broadband, and yet it's a new issue for government, both state and county and federal government issue, and how do we really uh, deal with the digital divide, fill in the missing areas, and really promote Western North Carolina for a future-proof uh, future. Uh, so with that, thanks for your interest.